what's up y'all welcome back to the vlog how y'all doing it's been a long week like it's finally sunday we finally about to get into the recap of episode four season three of the shy y'all so if y'all seen the previews um you seen that dre had a vision that keisha she was talking to keisha so i knew it was a vision i knew keisha hadn't been found and they were just being that um uh, cordial that soon unless they you know skip something in this um season and just went to that part but i figured it was a flashback so let's just get into the episode um in this episode we found out that miss ethel has passed away which this just was pushed on us because when did miss ethel pass away the last episode we seen ronnie We'll get into that part. So, Miss Ethel has passed away. Duda, <laughs> his estranged wife has re-entered the picture, which from the previews we already knew. Um, yeah, it's a lot going on. And also in this episode, we see that Emmett and Tiffany went ahead and worked things out. They're working things out as much as they can. And that's pretty much the gist of this episode. I know y'all seen that there, the police had found a body in the previews. It appeared that they had found a body in the previews. Um, I'm just here to tell you that da, da, da. <laughs> if you already didn't know, it wasn't Keisha. Okay, we have not found Keisha dead. Spoiler alert. Did I say spoiler alert too soon? <laughs> too late? But yeah, that's basically what happens in this um episode so this is a recap so if you're watching this then clearly you've seen it i don't know but i don't think i spoiled anything you know she she hasn't been found and she wasn't found dead so and i still believe that she's alive that's what i'm going with but yeah let's in the beginning of this episode um dre has a flashback that when she was telling Keisha, and I think this is an important part, that Keisha has that tattoo um, right on her back, that tramp stamp. That's what they call them, the tattoos that's like, <laughs> when you get that, <laughs> y'all, hold on, when you get that tattoo right there, it's called a tramp, <laughs> it's called a tramp stamp. <laughs> so she went ahead and got a tattoo right there. The thing that um, I think that's important because that's something to give the detectives information about, which clearly they haven't given that information to the detectives because Dre withheld that information, even from Nina, even from um, Keisha's mom, because Keisha's mom didn't even know that she had that tattoo. Um, so it's just like <clears throat> that right there. I still feel that people are withholding things and holding up the process of finding Keisha but Dre has this flashback she showed they revealed that part that Keisha had a tattoo and um Dre she's actually had a nightmare and she wakes up from her nightmare and runs into Keisha's room and Nina is in there cleaning up and she was like what you think about you bring about so she's in there cleaning up uh Keisha's room in expectation of Keisha coming back home and being able to be in her room and for it to be clean and they discussed that they hired a private detective that they're paying all this money for and not really getting any results so I'm interested to see who the private detective is because they have not revealed to us who the private detectives are the only thing that we've seen is um, the police officers that have been assisting them so yeah that's what's going on in the beginning of the uh, episode so, in the next in the next scene, Ronnie actually we find out who that white guy is. Remember that white guy that was at Keisha's visual, and we were wondering who that guy was. Was he in any other seasons? So the the explanation for where he, who he was and why Ronnie recognized him is he did a I was gonna say he did a bid. Ronnie ain't really did no bids like that. <laughs> Ronnie was just locked up. Um, a few times so Ronnie was locked up with this guy and the guy was locked up for a uh, child pornography or something he's a pedophile so he's a registered sex offender and that's how Ronnie recognized him so the guy was at the visual because 
I, I'm not sure why he was at the visual, but he doesn't live around that area. So Ronnie is uh, picking up trash around the area, digging in trash. You know, he's still collecting cans. He ends up digging in trash and actually seeing where this white guy lives at, coincidentally. He runs back into this white guy and he breaks into this man's house. When he breaks into his house, he found a whole bunch of child pornography. Uh, Ronnie, you know, Ronnie broke into his house because he still he's looking for Keisha. And even in this episode, Ronnie actually goes and speaks with Papa's uh, dad, the pastor, and tells the pastor... Because the pastor was like, why are you so invested in finding her? And Ronnie says what we all predicted is that he is um, feels some type of responsibility. This is his redemption and this is his charge. And he said he promised, this is when we found out Miss Ethel was dead. He said that he promised his dead grandma that he would be a warrior, that he would be a, um, a hero. And he's got to hold up that image and he's got to, you know fulfill that promise and this is how he's intends to do it so that's what's going on with ronnie did y'all see that part when ronnie was eating out the trash i was like he is playing that role he's a real bum he is eating out the trash <laughs> ronnie is eating out the trash like ill why did they <gasps> lena why why did y'all have to go there with it but yeah ronnie is playing that role and so ronnie breaks into the guy's house and takes some photographs because the guy has photographs of some underage girls and he brings that information back to Dre and he and Dre both go and look and ask some questions they go beat him you know knock him around a bit and ask some questions and that's when he reveals that there is a girl down at the beach 69th street beach and um that's what leads to that scene that y'all see on the preview when they find a dead girl on 69th Street. And that's when uh, Dre finds it appropriate to tell Nina that Keisha had a tattoo on her back because that was the way that Dre was going to be able to identify whether uh, the body was Keisha's or not. And as it turned out, it was not Keisha. Um, but yeah, that that is the next scene. Um, another part that I or another thing that I real uh recognize in this episode too is how Drake is so impressed by um Duda like he has really been looking to Duda as a role model he's now um supporting Duda in his campaign his uh for while he's running for mayor he also y'all notice that he called Duda his dad Somebody I was speaking to, I went live a few days ago. I was testing out the live here on, on YouTube. And somebody was chatting with me and said, what if Duda is Jake's father for real? Because we don't know who Jake's father is. And also, who, when um in this um season, Trig started referring to Jake's mom as all of their mom. But... I remember Reg referring to Jake's mom as Jake's mom. So I'm all confused. Like, is that all of their moms? Is Jake's mom the mother to all of them? Or do they have different moms? Do they have the same dads? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure how it goes. But that part is a little bit confusing for me. If y'all know and I missed something, y'all leave it in the comments. Because I, I, I don't know. But, yeah, Jake um called dude out his dad and that was a little bit strange to me i was like hmm now he feels comfortable enough to call him his dad i was like well this boy is so impressionable because he's now introducing dude to people of in position to help further dude campaign and jake is doing what he feels he can do in order to appease and impress Duda because he basically is looking to him as a role model. You know, Jake likes that street stuff, but he also likes that Duda is also someone ha that also has his hands and some political ties. So that was something that was um, so I, key for me to bring up because do y'all 
think that um, Duda could be Jake's dad. In this episode, when Candy, what is her name? Um, I gotta figure out what her character name, but I'm gonna call her Candy for right now because that's a real name. <laughs> when in this episode, when Candy reappears and she does notice how Jake and Duda have formed some type of relationship, some type of bond, she says why we never had kids and he's you know she's like you know I, I always knew that you would be a good dad and i was like hmm and dude i says jake has a special place in my heart so i'm wondering if jake is in fact dude's son what do y'all think that would be a crazy plot twist it would be a crazy plot twist if dude is jake's biological father and then Jake finds out that Duda had some information about how Reg was going to die. You know, he may not have had a, had, a, had a hand in it per se, but he did know. That would really emotionally mess up uh, Jake. And then Jake would then probably be pushed to uh, Trig and want to be with Trig because Trig hasn't had any recent portrayals other than just leaving him um behind abandoning him so yeah that's what's going on with that situation but y'all i i i'm really wondering like that could be a great way to flip the story if it's not already a part of the story so y'all sound off in the comments let me know what you think Okay, so let's talk about Tiff and Emmett's situation. So, y'all know how I was like, Tiff needs, or Emmett needs to leave Tiff alone because I was not liking her based on what her character was doing for um, the last seasons and the beginning of this uh, season. So, come to find out, Tiffany, we get a little bit more information and I was wrong. I was so wrong, which I'm okay with. I'm like, okay, good. You know, I'm happy to see that I was wrong in such a good way because Tiffany and Emmett are working things out. We get to see a little bit more of Tiffany's weed business, how she sells weed. It's really cute, you know, like she, <laughs> she really is selling weed like she thinks she's doing something. She's got it packaged all cute and she's selling to all her little connects that she knows and you know she goes to sell to this one guy and he is really laying it on thick trying to get with her she did turn him down so as it turns out she isn't cheating so maybe the the massage guy swayed maybe she was just selling him weed and that's why she had his card in her bag and uh, was able to <laughs> have easy access to him so maybe we were wrong the whole time but in this episode, uh, Emmett goes and talks to his dad. His dad is like, oh, she definitely cheating. I said, like, you just need to cheat back, bruh. Because <laughs> Emmett is concerned. Him and Tiffany are no longer um, having any type of sexual uh, relations. They are pretty much working a lot and not really paying attention to each other. And I'm happy to see that in this episode, they actually went and got some counseling, which is good because it seems like Tiffany wasn't raised right. You, um, and Emmett, he was raised by a single mom, even though his dad is in his life. We know the backstory of his dad and um, how his dad pretty much didn't raise him and, you know, the role that his dad plays in his life. So Emmett definitely will benefit from seeking this therapy that he and Tiffany have, uh, the, or counseling that he and Tiffany are now in. And I was like, oh, this is great. This is definitely, because in the counseling, this is definitely going to be great, because in the counseling, um, Emmett tells Tiffany, or it wasn't in the counseling, somewhere in the episode, Emmett does um, make it clear that he wants to be better than and, and do things and have a better life than what he was raised with and how his parents raised him and Tiffany does too she also expresses those feelings that she wants to give her son a better life so them going to therapy is a great step in that direction 
Uh, I'm still on the edge about uh, Emmett and then um, Tiffany does reveal that she doesn't have sex with Emmett because she doesn't want to get pregnant again, which makes sense. Um, so I'm assuming that maybe she got an abortion with that last pregnancy that she had because she did show Emmett some papers saying that she was pregnant and she did also show Emmett's dad some papers saying that she was pregnant and Emmett didn't want anything to do with the baby. So it appears that they are trying to uh, work on their relationship and that's a great thing. I'm so glad that I was wrong about that situation. Do y'all think it will last? Um, I still believe that Emmett's um, going to mess around with uh, Dominique and that girl's name is Dominique now. We all... <laughs> That girl's name is Dominique. Lala, her character, um, we're going to call her Dominique and that's final. <laughs> So, uh, I still believe that he's going to deal around with Dominique. But I love that the end when Emmett made those immediate changes to um, help put Tiffany at ease. And also, of course, he wants to have sex, so he did make those changes. But um, it's good that he actually listened. But I was like, whoa, y'all doing it on Mama's couch? Like, come on now. Where is Miss Washington? Where is Jada at? Why these kids in here about to make another baby? <laughs> but it was cute. I really, I was like, okay, I like this part. I could get with it. Okay, so. The little girl. What is their character's name? The girl that uh, Kevin is now his new love interest from his school. Uh, she bothers me. She bothers me. Everything about the girl bothers me. Her clothes, the way she wears her hair. Not because it's in an afro, just because it's stereotypical that it bothers me. Her, her choice of earrings bothers me. Y'all notice that? I think this time she had the Eye of Horus on her earrings. Last time she had African earrings um africa the shape of africa the continent earrings um just those little things <laughs> everything about the girl bothers me she always is complaining about something she's bragging about her dad having money even at the um the uh donor the the affair that they had the fundraiser she was in there just tearing the place to pieces, talking about how white, you know, how oppressed we are and how we have to be better than them. And in that um, scene, Jake says, why is everybody hanging off your daddy's nuts? And she was like, oh, because he got money. And I was like, okay, well, is it a black and white thing or is it a money thing? Because they just mistook Nina for the help, but they're over there on your dad's... <laughs> All, your, all in your dad's face, you know? So, even in her little spiel about um, just how they, these, a lot of these donors have never even sat down and had a dinner with a black person. I'm just like, girl, okay, um, ne uh, Lena, <laughs> like, please, please. It's something about her character just bothers me. And I'm not saying... It's because I have a, a issue with a, a cultural differences or the issue of race, um, segregation, or the, the issue, the, the whole race thing that we're going to prejudice aspects of our society and things that are going on right now, the racial tension that is in the air right now. I don't have an issue with that. I recognize that, I understand that. Her approach is what bothers me. Let, let me just clarify that. Her approach is, is what just bothers me. Like, I just be wanna be like, girl, get out of my face. But um, yeah, that, that part. And then Jake still hasn't told her that his sister is missing, which is weird because why would she not know that his... Well, she's from the north side, so I guess she's not knowing what's going on down in the hood. Even though she feels like she knows everything. Even at, when Jake took her to the museum the, to see the civil rights um, exhibit, she just went to the manager and complained. Like, she's like a black Karen. Like, seriously, y'all. If y'all agree with me, put it in there. Uh, thumbs up the video. She is a black Karen. 
but let's touch on the fact that uh lena waith actually appeared in her uh show as the runner-up to otis for mayor she gave a speech inside of um the church the church that um <clears throat> papa's father owns remember he was starting his church he was like my dad's gonna start a church as soon as he gets some members so it's it's good to see the progress of that his dad is actually went ahead and started a church in this season he's got a small congregation and he's doing well and he went ahead and and also did you remember when um papa was debating with jake about who should be mayor and, and papa said well i'm leaning towards um what is her name in this hold on okay so lena's character's name is camille okay let's just get that right so yeah papa's dad invites camille to come and give a campaign speech pretty much at his church and i believe that's what's also influencing papa to make his decision that he wants to uh vote if he could vote that he would vote for camille over otis do that because he expresses those feelings and how he to jake and jake's like why you want to vote for her and, <laughs> and and papa says oh because i am pretty much a visionary and i am what did he say i can't really remember what he said but pretty much he said that he is pro the lgbtq community he's not somebody that has an issue with that that's pretty much what he said and i was wondering about the his papa's dad like papa's dad went ahead and invited Camille to the church to give her campaign and then after she gave her campaign speech um, She did Camille did hand Papa's dad some money and Papa mentioned it. He said dad Why you accepting money from her? I thought we were supporting her because we were well I'm I'm saying what I believe Papa would have said he did ask why did you collect some money from her? but I believe he was asking that because he wanted to know are we really supporting her because we believe in her visions for the community because her campaign speech was something that really pulled uh, on your emotions this whole episode had me on the edge of my seat it really had me emotionally involved and that's what made it a very good episode for me i was very emotionally invested i was on the edge of my seat this whole episode wondering what's gonna happen i love the plot twist especially with the emmett and tiffany situation and finding out who the white guy is and his role and everything thus far but um to see camille give that money um really through papa and papa wanted to know are we really supporting her because of her visions and her plans that she has for our community or did you just make some money for the church and it's funny that kids look up to parents and think that parents can do no wrong or that we're perfect and so i think this is jake's first time seeing his dad do something so questionable and jake having to question is his dad this perfect person or is his dad living up to all these standards and practices that he preaches you know it's really heartbreaking for i remember when i first seen my mom doing something that she found so disgusting and told you know talked about so lowly of people that did these type of things when i seen her do something like that how it really was heartbreaking to see that she wasn't this perfect person that i thought she was so it was interesting to see that scene what do y'all feel do you uh, about that that part when camille gave him that money that was interesting for me i was like hmm I don't know and she did give a speech that was pulling on the emotions of the um, the voters so she's using that strategy 
in order to pull in the voters. Um, and the voters, they don't know her. And then whereas Dudas is saying that he would be a mayor that is trying to structure the city as a business um, versus a city project, which is pretty much what um, Camille's vision is thus far. Um, it'll be interesting to see who actually wins the election. Uh, who do y'all have y'all money on? I can't really decide right now. If I had to choose, I would choose right now, I would go with Mr. Perry. I would go with Otis Perry. Um, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Don't drag me for my choice, okay? Who, who would y'all vote for? Put it in the comments. <laughs> and that pretty much sums up this episode. That was pretty much the high, highs and lows of this episode. I really enjoyed this episode. Reg, um, not Reg, but Trig and Imani wasn't on this episode. However, in the scene where um, Lena is, why well, I keep forgetting her character's name. <laughs> when Lena is giving her um, campaign speech, I did notice that there were a lot of um, what appeared to be uh, gay members in the um, audience. And I said, okay, well, I guess Papa's dad is really progressive in his um, church and and likes to be all inclusive, and that's great. And then it's also, I believe, um, Lena's way of normalizing the uh, gay community to be able to see the LGBTQ community. I believe I, that's all of the uh, community to see them regularly on television, especially in this, um, that's probably, I think that's all I wanted to say about this episode. I'm gonna have to rewatch it. I'm just saying what is coming to mind as of now. Y'all sound off in the comments if I missed anything. However, um, the I watched it on Amazon Prime and when I seen the previews on there before the shy came on. I seen a preview for another show that um, Lena Waits directs, and it is uh, called Twenties. And I watched a few episodes of it because I hadn't watched it before, and I was like, "Wow, it's really a refreshing show. It definitely incorporates the gay community, which is not surprising. But when I seen the uh, beginning credits, it said that it was made." Uh, produced or something by Showtime in association with BET and I was like oh my god like every time I see BET I think of that interview that um, Janet Hubert gave <laughs> what she called BET a nigga network I was like oh my goodness not the nigga network uh, but y'all remember Janet Hubert uh, went on that rant when uh, Will Smith black uh, listed her from Hollywood because <laughs> After she was on uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the Black Unveiled, y'all. That's who Janet Hubert is. But she went on that rant and called BET the Nigger Network. And <laughs> so when I see the uh, beginning part, and I was like, not in association with BET. And I haven't watched BET in like freaking forever. Like I don't even watch the BET Awards anymore. Um, the, in my opinion, that network has no substance. Uh, and I know she called, referred to it as the nigga network, but I really do believe that BET dropped the ball when it came to supporting the um, community. And I seen a, somebody tweet not too long ago that BET, also what I, what, how I feel, they, they pretty much said that BET dropped the ball when it came to the community. They kept on rerunning Baby Boy every night, but what about black um, like a black HGTV, you know, like a home building, a black cooking show. There's a guy that I follow on Facebook. His name is Darius. I believe his show is called Darius Cooks. And he is a very well-known cook. Shout out to him. He probably doesn't even know I watch his stuff. But I remember when he first started his business, he started his own cooking network. Um, I was very excited for that. He also helps fix credit. Um, y'all just then plugged him on into my stuff. He, this man probably doesn't even know me, but I've been watching him for a very long time. He cooks soul food. Um, he's, uh, a very funny guy. Very, makes you feel very welcome when you watch his content. You can find him on Facebook. 
However, um, yeah, I was like, y'all really did drop the ball when it came to that type of stuff. So um, it was interesting when I seen that, that it was in association with BET. And I um, it did spark my interest again with BET to go check them out. I haven't checked them out yet. However, I will when I find the time to see what they've got going on and uh, things of that nature. But yeah, y'all, have y'all watched that show? uh 20s how do y'all feel about it it's really refreshing i uh was happy to see it and i the main character i'm not sure of her name just yet um, i only watched one episode um <laughs> she reminded me of myself no i'm not gay um however her personality reminded me of myself she's very it, you have to see it but anyway um yeah y'all and then also we have power coming out i'm excited about it that but now i'm rambling y'all um it was good to come on here and talk to y'all i hope y'all enjoyed the recap y'all be easy thanks for watching like comment subscribe peace